Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about the base compensated current mirror. Um, I have drawn the circuit schematic for a base compensated current mirror, sometimes referred to as the three transistor current mirror, for obvious reasons. Um, and you can see that it resembles a basic VJT current mirror, except we have replaced our direct connection uh, in transistor Q1 between the collector and the base of the transistor um, with another transistor Q3. And so now the collector of Q1 is no longer connected directly to the base of Q1, but rather to the base of transistor Q3. And Q3 is the transistor that is supplying uh, the base currents for Q1 and Q2. Um, so basically, this will be my IB1, IB2. If I'm assuming uh, well-matched transistors, then I'll have, you know, the BBEs are equal. Uh, and then the base currents Um, are equal. And I'm going to assume transistor Q3 is also well matched, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, no, actually I'll just leave it like this for now. So this is IB. Um, and so as we said, if those, if those two base currents are equal, uh, then this current over here is going to be two times IB. Um, and IB basically is um, the collector current of Q1 and Q2, which are matched. Uh, so basically I out divided by beta. And so this will be equal to two times I out divided by beta. Um, there's going to be one base current going into Q3, IB3. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to have a uh, VBE voltage drop uh, from base to emitter of Q1. Since Q1 and Q2 are well matched, I'm assuming that's the same uh, base emitter voltage for Q2 as well. And then I'm going to have another VBE drop for transistor Q3. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead and perform the calculations uh, to determine one, the current transfer ratio for this new current mirror, as well as the output resistance. Uh, so I'm going to calculate first my reference current, for which I have set up my circuit uh, with resistor R. And so that's going to be equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance, which is VCC. And notice that now you have uh, two VBE drops um, till the collector of, of transistor Q1. So VCC minus VBE minus VBE3 uh, divided by R. Again, if the transistors are uh, well matched, so I'm going to say assume matched transistors. This will be approximately equal to VCC minus 2 VBE divided by R. Uh, if the transistors are well matched, then I will have that um, IC1 will be the same as IC2. The collector currents of those two transistors will be identical. IC2, of course, is just simply I out, and that's going to be equal to... Um, my I reference current minus IB3, the current going into the base of transistor 3. So I reference minus IB3. But IB3 is equal to the collector current of transistor 3 divided by the beta of that transistor. So I can rewrite that as I reference minus IC3 divided by beta 3. And then 
uh, I can finally rewrite that as i out equals i reference minus, and then ic3, the collector current through transistor q3, which just labeled this here as two times i out divided by beta. So minus two i out divided by beta three times beta. And so I want to solve for my current transfer ratio, which is I out divided by I ref. In order to do that, I can uh, take all my um, terms that are multiplying times I out to one side of that equation and the I ref terms to the other side. And then finally, I'll just do everything in one step. Calculate I out over I ref, which is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 2 over beta 3 times beta. So this is my current transfer ratio. For the base uh, compensated current mirror. Uh, notice that it resembles very much the current transfer ratio for the uh, basic current mirror, but now we have that extra beta three term um, uh, basically reducing the error in our current transfer ratio. So it uh, it helps I out be closer to I ref by a factor of, um, you know, uh, beta three in that second term. For that reason, sometimes uh, transistor Q3 is referred to as the beta helper. So I'm going to make a note to that. Q3 referred to as the beta helper. And basically you can see what it does in the circuit. Uh, in the case of the simple current mirror, we had um, the difference between I ref and the collector current going into Q1 uh, was the two base currents, the base currents going into Q1 and Q2. By adding Q3, now I'm only losing one base current and I'm letting Q3 feed uh, with its collector current feed the bases of Q1 and Q2. Uh, with uh, simply one output, you may not see the advantage of this uh, that easily, but imagine if you keep adding outputs, so instead of just having Q2, you had another output, Q3, Q4, etc., or I guess Q3 is already taken, but Q4, Q5, um, etc., now you wouldn't have the same loading effect as you had with your current mirror, meaning you wouldn't have uh, the, the um, current going out of the collector uh, basically, the, the difference between IREF and IC1 uh, increasing as you increase the number of stages because obviously the current uh, leaving in that case was going to increase as you increase the number of transistors and was just going to be equal to n times the beta current, n being the number of outputs. In this case, no, ma no matter how many outputs you have, you're going to have a single base current um, being taken out of IREF uh, before you get IC1. So that's why you're getting a more accurate uh, current transfer ratio. And again, you will see much more the difference in accuracy uh, as you keep increasing the number of outputs in your current mirror. Now, uh, if uh, we were able to make the approximation that beta 3 is approximately equal to beta, then we could approximate our current transfer ratio as follows, 1 over 1 plus 2 divided by beta squared. So in that case, it's a little bit easier to compare with the simple current mirror, the basic current mirror, and see that instead of simply beta in the denominator, now we have beta squared. This isn't always a fair assumption, the fact that um, we can assume Q3 to be well matched with Q1 and Q2 in terms of um, the temperature and in terms of the uh, process parameters. And so it's, uh, it's fine to make the approximation that the VVE voltage be the same, uh, but with the current, the collector current uh, is uh, dependent, or actually the value of beta is dependent on the collector current. The collector current has an effect on the value of beta, as you will see if you look at the data sheet for a transistor. And since the collector current of Q3 is compatible to the base currents of Q1 and Q2, um, it, it may not be fair to assume that the beta for Q3 will be the same as for Q1 and Q2. Typically, beta 3 will be smaller than beta 1 and beta 2. 
uh, advantages of this circuit uh, is that reduces the error in the current transfer ratio. So reduces error in output current uh, due to base currents. By a factor of beta, beta three, um, and therefore it is more stable uh, when adding multiple outputs. Uh, in terms of trade-offs or disadvantages, I rather call them trade-offs. Uh, what we are losing is increased transistor count. Now, we mentioned that um, there are uh, some critical uh, current, ca uh, current source characteristics that we're going to be looking at when we compare current mirrors. I'm going to write them down here. Uh, critical current source characteristics, or maybe key characteristics would be a better uh, way of defining it. Um, one thing is how robust the output current is to changes in beta. So, um, I out is table to changes in beta. And so in this case, we have a more stable and then loading, uh, which can come from two sources, changes in output voltage, basically VCE for the output transistor, as well as uh, changes or increases in number of outputs. Both of these will be uh, loading effects. And so uh, in terms of uh, changes in beta and increased number of outputs, we can see that this current source is more stable than the basic current mirror. If we, again, can live with the trade-off of having an additional transistor in our circuit, so more complex circuit. Uh, for changes in output voltage, if we wanted to compare uh, how robust is current source is with respect to the basic mirror, we will be looking at the output resistance. And we can see, um, just by simple inspection, that the output resistance, in this case, are out. I'm going to put that in yellow in my circuit. Are out will be the um, output resistance looking into the collector of uh, transistor Q2, or the output transistor. And therefore, our out is also going to be equal to little arrow for transistor 2. And so, in terms of how uh, robust the current source is to changes in output voltage, we can see that it is comparable to the basic current mirror. Thank you.